this is a good thing. This is a healthy, healthy relationship, I think, with Trump to, to challenge him when we don't, or at least I don't understand what he's doing. Giving the nod to neocons, I couldn't have titled it any better. Pedro L. Gonzalez is great. Donald Trump's endorsement of Morgan Ortega empowers GOP hawks and a close friend of Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump. I didn't know that till I read this article. All this makes sense. It makes so much sense right now. If you don't know what happened, I think, was it yesterday? <clears throat> Excuse me. The days go by so fast. I'm... Donald Trump endorsed former State Department spokesperson um, Morgan Ortega for the Republican nomination in Tennessee's 5th congressional, congressional District against Rep. Jim Cooper. If you've been following that, the problem is, and I found about the, found out about this guy through Tim Pool. He was on Tim Cast about eight my, months ago or so. Robbie Starbucks. He, he, Robbie, <clears throat> Robbie um, has really done a lot of outreach. And if you don't know, I'll, I'll get into it more. Robbie, Robbie Starbuck has done a lot of outreach, and people have warmed up to him. And I, I'm surprised Trump didn't know that or or what. And I don't know if any news came out recently. Maybe Trump, I heard a rumor, I'll talk about it here, that he was going to double endorse to kind of make up for it. But Ortegas met with Jerry Kushner and Ivanka Trump in Nashville. She's a close friend. According to this article, I, I have no idea, but according to this article, she is a close friend of Ivanka and has described Kushner as a very close friend. I think... Morgan Ortega is a very, very similar to Kamala Harris. We can make fun of Hillary Clinton and Kamala Harris and Morgan Ortega, but one thing you cannot say about them is you cannot say they don't know how to play the game of life and politics. So I'm not saying that they're fake friends or anything like that, but it doesn't surprise me. You look at Kamala Harris's history, Morgan, anyone who has risen to that power, Joe Biden, Joe Biden made a strategic relationship with the Dixiecrats of the South, the, the, the Democrats of the South. And it helped him in his career. And he pivoted away when it didn't help him anymore. She hasn't officially announced a run yet, but Robbie Starbuck, I, I think I called him Starbucks earlier, Starbuck, a Republican transplant from California, declared that he would challenge Cooper last year. So we've known this for a year. Starbuck cast himself as a popular populist, whereas Ortega's is seen as a proxy for neoconservative interests within the America First movement. Uh, I don't know. I'm not any gatekeeper, so I'm not claiming to do that. I have never in my life looked at Morgan Ortegas and thought she was an America first candidate. When I just, let me just say, when I say an America first candidate, it's not, it's not Morgan Ortegas. That that's not who I'm talking about. And that's part of the problem here. Ortegas served as a hard line Neo con for secretary of state Pompeo. And I'm, I'm very iffy on Mike Pompeo as well. I'm not saying Ortegas is all bad. I'm not saying Pompeo is all bad. I'm just saying they're not the what I envision when I get excited about a red wave coming up. Donald Trump made a statement. Donald Trump made the statement here. I'm told the very strong and impressive Morgan Ortega is exploring a run for Congress in Tennessee's 5th Congressional District. I couldn't be happier because she's an absolute warrior for the America First and MAGA, for America First and MAGA. That kind of made me go sideways when he said that. Morgan was fantastic in her role working with Secretary Mike Pompeo at the U.S. State Department and understands the threats posed by China, Russia, Iran, and others, and will be tough, not just roll over, like the Democrats and rhinos, she serves in the U.S. Navy Reserves and will fight for our military. She won't bow down to the woke mob or the leftist lamestream media. Morgan Ortegas will have my complete and total endorsement if she decides to run. And he would have the inside information. I think Trump is just kind of saying he knows she's going to do it. Let's look at her history. 
The first post she held in government was as a public affairs officer at the U.S. Agency for International Development from 2007 to 2008 under President George W. Bush. In 2013, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg presided over her wedding. She also, now that's not necessarily a, a bad thing, but it's just when you put it all together, it just makes you go, eh. <laughs> just like, I don't know. She also served on Jeb Bush's presidential campaign in 2016. Now, let me stop there and say uh, my my 2016 was a long time ago. So it, just because she was in that realm, I was and I'm still working on my thoughts to do a video on this. I was an AOC supporter um, just be, before the pandemic. I even did videos on this channel where I kind of defended Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. So you can change quickly uh but this is not really where she's at i i don't see the evidence of that change she worked for a super PAC associated with jeb ortegas criticized trump during a fox news appearance because he does not think that americans should be quote unquote the policeman of the world <laughs> that's why that's actually what made people fall in love with trump is quotes like that Ortega added that she fundamentally disagrees with the isolationist approach to foreign policy. So it's just like, we have to hash this out. Like, are you, did you change your mind or like what, what's happening? And, and walk us through that process. And that's what I want to talk about with where I went with my process. I, I need to walk through that process. When Pompeo selected her as a spokeswoman, the Washington Post celebrated her. Like it's just all adding up. It's all these little things that add up and it's like, I, I don't know where you're at. The Washington Post celebrated her as indicating the merger of traditional Republican foreign policy ideals, ideas, uh, ideals with the America first mantra of President Trump and his campaign. Uh, I mean, is it just me or is it just like, I don't understand this. But if she was a bridge between the GOP establishment and Trump world, as Pearls described her, Ortega's doesn't mind occasionally reaching across the aisle. I, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not against. So I'm showing this picture here. I, I'm not against reaching across the aisle. And if, if for whatever reason, Joe Biden invited me to the White House for some type of acknowledgement or whatever the case, I would go. I would be respectful. I wouldn't take any selfies though. I, I just, I can't, I can't make that leap. That that's just too much. I still respect the office of the presidency. So I, I'm torn on this. The picture. What do you think? Does this picture mean anything? It's just one of those more cringe moments. In a goodbye email sent to the state department, um, colleagues obtained exclusively by the National Pulse, Ortega's pledge to faithfully serve the Biden administration. So, I don't know. I I would go to the White House as a citizen for an acknowledgement to respect the office, but I'm not serving. I, I am not serving under this person. Absolutely not. Despite his occasional criticisms. Of House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, Trump is still fundraising on his behalf. I just put that in there because it just it shows me Trump is ah he needs guidance. There are whispers that Trump might, in order to save face amid backlash, endorse both. That might be. I think that would be a smart. I mean, it doesn't mean much, but it, I think that would be a, a. Here's the thing. Donald Trump got the feedback about the Ar Operation Warp Speed. Like, bro, we. We don't want to talk about that right now. It, and in Arizona, he had a rally and he never brought it up. Not once. He only brought up the V as in freedom. And he did much better. My point with bringing that up is if he does endorse Starbucks, what it represents is Trump listens to the people. And that's really, that's all we need him to do, in my opinion. So I, I do need to see him do something here because he, he's not showing me that he's learned from his first four years in office. You can't listen to Ivanka and Jared on everything. They're right sometimes, but it, you've got to listen to the people and then you've got to be able to tell Ivanka and Jared, no, I'm not endorsing your girl. 
Trump's endorsements are unmoored from principles. Is that like, I that's perfectly written. It's it's like disconnected. It's mostly about who has his ear, which is generally not the people for whom America First is more merely an empty. Well, I don't know. It seems like Kerry Lake, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, some people might have his ear, and he does adjust. So I'm not going to say he doesn't adjust at all. In the end, the only interesting part of this story is that it shows, despite media narratives that they have distanced themselves from Trump, Jared and Ivanka still remain deeply influential. What I want to say about this is Trump, Donald Trump went into the swamp and it's not possible. It was impossible for him to surround himself with people he could trust. D.C. is like filled with people who make Morgan Ortega, make her look like a pillow, a soft toy, like a, a nothing to worry about. And she's a establishment in bed in neocon. So Trump had to surround himself with people he trusts family. He had no choice, in my opinion. So, the, But they do have influence over him. This is Morgan Ortega and Bill Gates. I, 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 I'm not saying, I'm just showing the picture. I'm not saying anything about it. I'm just like, okay, I'm not, I'm not taking selfies with Bill Gates. That's all I'll say. That's what I'll say there. <laughs> I, I did this one because it's very true. You, you look, so I think this is what Andrew Smith is saying here. Wonder why Trump would endorse Morgan Ortega over Robbie Starbuck. Huge mystery. Only election day. The nerds could find out what he's saying is you, we know Trump. Trump's a showman. He was with the uh, um, the beauty pageant, and uh, he loves beauty. Uh, Morgan Ortega is an attractive person, and objectively, that you know who's Donald Trump going to just forget about ideology? Look at it. Look at this. Donald Trump's going to be like, "Are you crazy?" That, that's just how he is. So, uh, just we just have to guide him. Props to Carrie Lake, who was also on with Tim Pool. Tim Pool got everybody on the show. But she was great. I think Carrie Lake, Marjorie Taylor Greene, they were great on the show. But Carrie Lake was like, and she doesn't go against Trump much. She, she doesn't want to do that. She was there in Arizona in the rally. Trump was bigger than up. So this is a kind of a delicate moment for her. She's like, I'm sticking with Robbie Starbuck. He's a patriot who loves America. I endorsed Robbie months ago. Believe he's exactly what we need in these difficult times. He's a God-fearing man who loves his wonderful family. He's a true citizen politician. Robbie will serve the people of Tennessee well. That's her opinion. I'm going to end on this. this is, I think this is my last slide here. Oh, no. I got a couple more. Uh, I just did this one because it was kind of it. So she said that he was God-fearing. He's a God-fearing man who loves his wonderful family. He's a true citizen politician. And this person on Twitter is like, F, like WTF does God fearing mean? And what does that have to do with his ability to serve in government? I'm just like, oh my good. It's, it, there's nothing wrong with asking the question because you don't understand. I don't like the WTF. That that because that's disrespectful. Just, if you don't understand what God fearing means, just ask the question and be humble. There's a lot. I see that on Twitter a lot. Where and I'll ask a question a lot. I'm like, I don't know what that means. What does that mean? I'm not gonna be like, what the f? You know, just be humble, bro. You need you need something. A lot of these people don't believe in a higher power, so that's how government becomes their higher power. That's why these officials become their deities. What does God fearing mean? Which is a fair question. I'm not going to get into it now, but it, it's a very powerful statement. And it's not something I know without knowing somebody. But to put WTF in front of that, just to try and disrespect it, and then say, what does it have to do with your ability to serve in government? That's why we have people who have a new state religion of critical theory, because you're not God-fearing, sir. And then Louis, um, Louisa said, you know, what does it mean? She was like, it means everything, bruh. That was a tangent. Back on this. To end, I'm going to end on this. Continuing to get calls for com comment and info on what happened with the absurd preliminary Trump endorsement of Morgan Ortega's over Robbie Starbuck. This is Daniel Bostic. Excellent tweet here. Another, I have one more tweet after this. There is a broader, there is a broader issue in Team Trump that needs to be addressed for him to be relevant going forward. 
it's worth the battle. So it's nothing against Trump. Trump did the unthinkable. He will never be forgotten in the annals or annals of history for he beat Hillary Clinton. He did the impossible. Nobody else could have done that. Nobody else had the charisma, the bravado, the cojones. But he's all, he was perfect for that time. Times change, though. Times change. The message to Team Trump from the populist New Right is clear. I like New Right. I'm going to start using that. Your supporters are not in a liberal-style cult, sir. This is not the establishment. We are not just blindly following you. We, we're actually helping you, bro. They won't, finally fo they won't blindly follow you when you listen to DC consultants that undermine your promises to the base. Clean up the ship and stay on track or get out of the way. Let me know what you think. Take care.